What is up, youth? It's your boy, Josh. So excited that you guys are here. Before we get rolling, just want to remind you guys that we have another Youth at Night coming up next Wednesday. I don't know if you saw the last one. I did. It was amazing. It was epic. I laughed. I cried. It moved me. It was amazing. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be next Wednesday, 7 p.m. on YouTube. Invite a friend. Tell some people. It's going to be great. Can't wait to see you guys there. Before we get into a time of worship tonight, I'm just going to go ahead and pray for us. God, thank you so much that we have this platform um, on YouTube to be able to gather together, to be able to sing praises, sing truth, to be able to hear a message to change our hearts. God, we just ask in this moment, um, wherever we are, if we're sitting on the couch, um, at the table, in our rooms, whatever, God, that you would just enter into this space, that we would just be aware of your presence, and that we would be able to just experience just the peace and joy of your spirit um, in this moment. It's all for your glory. We're just so excited to be able to be here together tonight. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. When night is falling, when fear is calm. Still you're calling me When faith is lost My hope exhausted You will be my strength When my mind says I'm not good enough God, you're enough for me I've decided I'm not giving up you won't give up on me, you won't give up on me, your love is holding on and it won't let go, I feel it breaking out like an echo, your love is holding on and it won't let go, I feel it breaking out like an echo in my soul. my soul in every season you keep repeating your promises to me and now there's no stopping where you have started until it is complete when my mind says I'm not good God, you're enough for me. I'm decided I'm not giving up. Cause you won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. I feel it breaking out like an echo. Your love is holding on and it won't let me go I feel it breaking out like an echo in my soul in my soul when my mind says I'm not good enough God you're enough for me I'm decided I'm not giving up Cause you won't give up on me You won't give up on me Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo Your love is holding on and it won't let me go Breaking out like an echo in my soul, in my soul, in my soul, in my i 
by your stripes I am healed with one touch I am made whole you have spoken and I know that it is so in the storm you are peace and your love let me go you have spoken and I know that it is so it's in every sea up everybody thank you for joining us um, for the message today let's go ahead and dive right in i want to start by asking you this question here have you ever felt thankful that one of your friends gave you a heads up about something that you were unaware of um maybe you said 
or something like this was said to you, yo, bro, you have something in your teeth, like, get that out before you're embarrassed, or like, dude, your fly is unzipped, like, turn around and fix that before somebody finds that out, or, um, or like, dude, the person that you're talking about is standing right behind you. Have you ever been like, oh, thank you so much for letting me know what's going down? We've all had moments like this, and no one likes hearing that they have food on their shirt or like toilet paper stuck on their shoe or something like that. But when somebody cares enough about you um, to look out for you and to save you from fu future embarrassment, like that is times that we can be grateful for, right? So with that in mind, let's, let's take this a little further, um, but maybe even from the other side of it, the person that is informing a friend that they have something going on. Um, have you ever felt like you should say something to someone else, but you weren't sure how to go about it? Like there was something on your mind, there was something going on that they might have been unaware of or they were fully aware of, but you just had to address it. If you think about it, telling your friends that they have food on their face is one thing, but we all know that there is bigger stuff that is a completely different conversation, and those those situations are very, very difficult to navigate through. So... Um, on, on, so maybe this would be an example of that talking to a friend about a relationship that you don't think is good for them. That's a lot different than saying, Hey bro, you have something in your teeth. That's like, bro, there's, there's a friendship that I think that we need to talk about that we need to address right now, or maybe confronting somebody about decisions that they've been making lately. Like, Hey, I noticed that you've been making these decisions and they're affecting your life and they're gonna affect your life poorly. That is a hard conversation to dive into. Or maybe speaking up about something that you know is going to get them in trouble. Like, hey, I know you've been doing this, I know it's gonna get you in trouble, but like, we need to have this conversation. These conversations are tough ones. Like speaking up in situations like this, they are beyond difficult. Like if your brother or sister or, or friend are, are hanging out with people who are convincing them to do things that you know just are not good for them, that are not right, what are you supposed to say? If, if your best friend is making decisions that their parents would not be cool with, is it really your place to say something about it or should we just remain silent? See, it gets kind of dicey. For being honest, it's conversations like these that we try to avoid. If you're anything like me, it's like, mm, yeah, I'm not gonna have that convo, that sounds awkward. Um, and, and we might avoid these for a bunch of different reasons. Maybe you think, dude, I don't wanna ruin my friendship, like I'm just gonna keep the peace, like I'm not gonna challenge my friendship with them. Or maybe um, we're doing or have done some of the similar things and you don't wanna sound hypocritical, like bro, you shouldn't hang out with that crew, but it's like you were hanging out with that crew a while ago, you know, so you don't wanna look hypocritical. Or maybe you don't engage in these conversations um, because you don't think the other person will listen, like they're not gonna be receptive of this conversation. Or maybe you just don't know what to say or how to say it. You're like, I don't even know how to begin to navigate through these waters, so I'm just not going to. For some of you, the situation is absolutely opposite. You have no problem telling people that you see things that they need to change about their lives. Like you're not shy to speak up at all. And the problem with that though, um, is that you may not always be speaking up in a way that causes people to want to listen, right? Maybe, maybe you're that person, maybe you have a friend that is like that. Um, but if you've ever wrestled with any of this stuff, the good news is this, you're not alone. We've all been in a boat where we have to decide how we're going to navigate through these waters. We've all been there. And we all know what it feels like to know that we need to say something, yet find ourselves unsure of what to say or how to say it. So what if we could learn a way to approach difficult conversations? Um, the older you get, I would say, even the more complicated the conversations are going to be. So what if we learned how to navigate those right now? What if there was a way to be helpful and kind when we choose to speak up? How, could we do that? What if there was a way to have difficult conversations that ended up actually bringing good into the situation? Well, let's talk about it. Here's the thing. No one wants to be known as a hater, right? Instead, we, we want to be a person or somebody who, who has a reputation to stand up for the right reasons, for, for how we love and how we treat other people. So, so when it comes to being a friend who looks out for others, how do we make sure we handle it in the right way, these situations in the right way? So last time we met, Hannah talked about how we should be all about love. Like our lives should be all about love. If it's not about love, we don't want to be a part of it. So 
who wouldn't want to have a reputation for loving others, right? No, no matter how tough we want to appear or how um, trendy like bashing on people or hating on people is, we all know it's better to be known for the way that we love one another. But if love is the goal, then how are we supposed to handle situations when, when somebody is literally doing something bad? It's easy to like, oh, I love you, man. It's hard to say, hey, I love you, and because of that, I have to dive into this really hard, hard conversation about some things that you have been doing. Maybe this person is doing something bad or dangerous or just plain dumb. Um, but Paul actually talked about this very thing, which I'm so grateful for. In a letter that he wrote to the church in Galatia, Paul gave us some insight on this topic. Here's what he said. Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. So Paul is saying that if the Galatians have some friends who share the same values but slip up and do something that is harmful, their responsibility is to help that person back onto the right track. In other words, he's saying that you and I should actually go further than just saying something in a conversation, not just like, hey, you're doing something wrong, fix it. We should actually help someone get back to the place that the best place that they can be. And that is on track pursuing God, um, pursuing what God says is best for our lives. Now, there's a lot that Paul isn't saying here too. He isn't saying that you are personally, personally responsible for making sure your friends make wise choices. Like we're not the choice police where we go around like, hey bro, don't do that. And he isn't saying that we should put ourselves in a position that sets us up for failure when we're trying to help our friends. Because maybe you're like, man, Jesus hung out with a pretty rough crew, so I'm going to do the same thing. But then you're like engaging in the same things that they are. Like that is just not wise. The point, according to Paul, is with humility and with gentleness, you and I can help those who are struggling to make wise decisions, and we can, we can help put them on the right path. And Paul continues in this in Galatians 6 verse 2. He says, share each other's burdens, and in this way, obey the law of Christ. Share each other's burdens, and basically, you're being obedient to Christ when you do such a thing. So how can we help aid people to get back on the right track? By carrying each other's burdens. So think about it this way. When it, when it comes to fitness training, which I am all too familiar with, I'm just kidding, not really. But when it comes to fitness training, there is a person that is known as a spotter. And a spotter is there to help when, when the weights get too heavy and the person that is doing the lifting is no longer, no longer able to lift the weights anymore. Um, when this happens, what happens? The, the spotter jumps in and helps carry some of the weight. Like they carry the burden of the weight along with the person doing the lifting. And that is what we're supposed to do to help people get back on the right path. So Paul cared deeply about this church, these people in Galatia, which is why he wrote what he did. He knew that the most loving thing to do isn't always the easiest thing to do. Maybe you need to be reminded of that. Sometimes the most loving thing that you can do isn't the easiest thing to do. But we owe it to each other to speak up. Because the truth is we need each other, not just to point out where others may have gotten off track, but to come alongside them and to help them carry the burdens of giving, getting back to the place that they should be. In other words, Jesus followers must do more than, than just speak up and point out what's wrong. We must make ourselves available to be spotters in the lives of others, to help make right where things have gone wrong. We don't just point fingers. We actually, we are people, Cedar Mill youth are people who actually share burdens and do the hard work of walking alongside people. So again, some of you are like, I'm not afraid to speak up. Like, I don't care what people think. I'll say whatever I need to say. For, the, for those of us who feel that way, Paul snuck in two words here that can be helpful to keep in mind when it comes to having these conversations. He said, we should be gentle and we should be humble meaning what we say is just as important as how we say it. Let me say that again. What we say is just as important as how we say it. The loving act is to not sound judgmental or arrogant or self-righteous, but being kind and helpful and encouraging shows people that we want to help them out in love. We're not there to like win an argument or to be like, you're wrong, I'm right, let's do this together. No, that's not the posture. Hard conversations, they are not easy but avoiding a hard conversation isn't loving. So it's like, 
I don't know, it's just kind of twofold. A hard conversation is really, really difficult, but avoiding to have the hard conversation isn't loving towards the person. And enjoying a hard conversation by like making someone look bad or feel terrible, like I'm gonna let him have it, I'm gonna lean into this and, and kind of guilt them or shame them, that isn't loving either. In, in fact, the conversation isn't really the point. The point is learning to ask the question, am I showing love in how I'm treating this person? What if we became people who ask that question? Man, let's engage in a conversation. Am I showing love in how I'm treating this person? And let me just say, love actually pushes us to talk about difficult things. When you love somebody, you will see past the difficulty. And, and, and love also pushes us to talk about difficult things in a kind and compassionate way, not just to prove a point. Because that's what love does. It shares the burdens by caring about the person, who the person is and carrying it, and not just about ourselves and our reputation. So what is this supposed to look like? How can we begin to put this into practice this week? Some of you might be thinking about a friend during this that you need to have a conversation with. And if you're gonna, if you're gonna choose to be known for love, um, then when it comes to what you say to help others, I think here's a few things that we need to remember. Um, well, this, this first overarching theme is this, let love be your filter. Let love be your filter. You already know how filters work. Think of like all oh, your phone, um, like Snapchat, Instagram, whatever. No matter where you look with the filter, it changes what you see. Um, the same is true for choosing love as a filter, as a follower of Jesus. No matter where you look, no matter who is in the camera, you see them differently than what, would, than what it would look like without the filter. You, you won't be known for love if the way you handle hard conversations and treat others is not loving, if it's not framed up with the filter of love. So when it comes to helping friends, we are, we are headed in unhealthy directions. When you're headed in unhealthy directions, you can become known for love by filtering your words and your actions through that filter, through love. So what exactly should a filter of love be applied to? Here's a few ideas. First off, let love be the filter for your involvement in the situation. So, so when you aren't sure if you should get involved into a friend's situation, ask yourself this question. What's the most loving thing that I can do right now? Like use this question to filter your next step. This provides a gut check for your motives and reminds you that you should be rooted in love. And, and if the loving thing to do is to get involved, um, to help someone back into the right path, then you'll know to take the next step. This, this can be tricky to figure out. So don't hesitate to ask, like seek wisdom, ask your small group leader, ask a parent or another trusted adult. And, and once you're sure the most loving thing to do is to get involved, Here's the next step. Let love be the filter for your words. Ask yourself, how would I want someone to speak to me? And what would I want him or her to say to me? Like what would communicate, a, the, what would communicate to me in a loving way if I were in their shoes? When you fil filter your words through love, you'll stop and make sure you're not just throwing shade or like proving them wrong. This isn't about making you look right and them wrong. Instead, you'll be letting them know that, that you're there to help them to carry their burdens, not to cast judgment. And your, your words can actually, they can spark hope, but they also have the power to spark judgment. So choose to spark hope, choose to love. If you filter them through love, they'll, they'll be words that, that can help get somebody's life back on track. Once you have a word filter in place, then it's time to take the next step. Third step is this. Let love be the filter for your actions and reactions. If we have friends that are having a hard time keeping their lives headed in the right direction, chances are they won't just need your words, they'll need your help. They'll need more than just a good encouragement. They will need someone to come and be the spotter in their life. So you have to choose to filter your actions through love, just like you do your words. Ask yourself, if I was in this situation, what would I need someone not just to say, but what would I need them to do? How would I need them to step into my life? We also need our reactions to be filtered with love. So oftentimes when we try to carry people's burdens out of love and we, we try to help, oftentimes our help is actually rejected. And we still need to respond to that rejection with love. And that can be difficult when we're attempting to love someone and then they wind up hurting us in some way. 
but even our reactions to their response can be filtered with love. I think it speaks volumes when we, when we are shut down and we still continue to respond in love and what's best for the person that we're pursuing. When we let love be our filter, we wind up sharing the burdens of those we love. Imagine how our friendships, imagine your friendships right now. Imagine your family right now. Imagine how it would be different if there were people filtering their involvement and their words and their actions through this one thing, love. We would say hard things to one another, not out of judgment or hate, but out of love. We would keep um, we would help keep each other from regrets and mistakes and unnecessary heartbreaks or negative consequences. Who knows, a filter of love might just change the trajectory of their life, not just now, but for eternity. Let's be people who let love be our filter so that we can help those who stay headed in the best direction for their lives. Let's love people well this week. We love you, Cedar Mill Youth. We can't wait to see you in person. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Now is the time where the real stuff happens. Jump in your Zoom meetings at 745. Your leaders are really excited to see you. If you're new with us, we'd love to get you plugged in. Go ahead and hit the little link in the description below and we'll connect you with one of our leaders and a group to hang out with. We love you guys and we will see you soon.